Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us here on the beginning of the early signing period for HBU football. I'm Russ Renault, and I'm joined by head coach Vic Sheely. Vic, you got another exciting signing class that signed today. Um, we've got uh, nine officially, maybe have a, a couple more later on today and to wrap up these three days of signing here in the early period. And I just wanted to talk about how different recruiting has been this fall for you. As, as many of you may not know, the NCAA has had a, a dead period that's extended through the spring. And so coaches really haven't been able to get out and see players as much th this year, actually get out at all. So it's been more of a virtual uh, recruiting period this year. You know, it's really been challenging. And I think we'd all say that this has been a year in so many ways like, like none other. Uh, COVID has had an impact in, in, in all segments of life. But, uh, you know, with what we do in, in, in the recruiting, because recruiting is a year-round process. And so, you know, if you kind of rewind a little bit, if you go back to last uh, February and, and as, as we signed the last few remaining players in the uh, uh, 20 class, uh, you know, we immediately get started on this particular class. And, and literally within weeks, you know, we've already begun to, to evaluate hundreds of players throughout the state of Texas. And uh, I think that uh, the, the, the process of, of evaluating a guy is uh, challenging even when you spend a lot of time. You could get, get him on campus, uh, get, get, get him to camps, and do all the things there to watch him play in the fall. And then, you know, the official visits that come in the wintertime of their senior year. So all that alone is, is, is an immense process, and you still feel like, you know, it's not enough. So to kind of be in a year where we've not been able to get out and, and really have a lot of time. We were fortunate, so the latter part of February last year, uh, we had a junior day. We had about uh, 250 players in uh, uh, throughout the state of uh, Louisiana and Texas uh, that uh, got in on campus, and we really felt like um, that gave us a chance to at least put some eyes, and, and in many cases, a lot of those players saw HBU's campus. They were able to walk you know, the sidewalks, see the buildings, you know, tour, tour the classrooms, you know, see the apartments and dorms, and. And then, you know, to be able to see the locker room, the weight room, the stadium. So it, it, it helped us out tremendously. Uh, but, um, you know, it, it, it's been a challenge. I really want to commend our staff. Uh, they've worked really hard, worked tireless. And uh, I think uh, particularly maybe for some of the teams that are still playing right now, uh, it's got to be tremendously difficult uh, to, to finish the year up and then having to play, you know, really catch up in the late fall here, here for December signing. But most kids are now signing in December. I think that uh, we'll see uh, that be consistent with what we're seeing now as a trend. Um, I do think that this year, Russ, we're going to see uh, throughout the entire college football much smaller signing classes. And uh, our signing class is smaller. This is the, probably the smallest class we've had since we've been at HBU. And uh, most of that is, is contributed to the simple fact that um, the NCAA froze the eligibility clock August 1 for every college athlete. And uh, uh, essentially, next August in 2021, they will pick up the eligibility time clock. So everyone was granted an extra year of eligibility. Thus, we, when you have seniors that would normally graduate in half or you know, two thirds decide to come back for a completed mm -hmm. you know, final senior year because they want to enjoy that senior moment, you know, it all of a sudden takes those scholarships that would normally free up. And it uh, really makes it difficult because now you're trying to um, you know, see where your recruiting has to now be trimmed down. And so uh, I think that we've seen uh, that be uh, something that has really caught a lot of people off guard, uh, just maybe how a few offers have come in the later fall because everyone's just really frozen on their numbers. Right. And with this recruiting, you can tell by this class, um, with the nine that, that we have so far, that eight of these guys are, are from Texas and five are from the, the Houston area. So you can kind of see how your recruiting has, has kind of followed uh, what you've been able to do this fall. Absolutely. You know, we are a Texas-based recruiting team. I mean, this is, our, this is our backyard, Houston, and we want to be great in this area. We, we do actively recruit Louisiana and Oklahoma, and, and we'll go beyond that as we need to. Um, I think the, the, the number of uh, greater Houston kids that, that, that you mentioned, it is a direct result that they just, just because of proximity, they've been on campus. You know, they've they've done something to to to, 
to have a greater understanding of who we are. In many cases, those families, even when we couldn't go off campus as coaches, you know, they were able to come on campus. We weren't able to recruit them because of the dead period that the NCAA set. But they could still work through our, through our admissions office to be able to get to our campus and, and just to, to familiarize themselves with us. You know, in the past uh, four or five years, Houston and Dallas and the Metroplex has kind of been about an even split with East Texas mm -hmm. and Central Central Texas kind of being the third, you know, the other third of that. And and so it's um, it, it's not a bad thing to, to do a great job. I think we've done a great job in Houston this year. Right. And so what we came here for, and I know that you're excited to, to talk about these guys. And so we'll start off and, and we'll just start off on the offensive side of the ball. and. And we'll let you talk about uh, yeah. these great athletes that we have today. Well, this is really a special group. Uh, you know, the thing that happens with every year, uh, particularly as you mature as a program like we were doing, and, and we have a talented roster. We have a, a roster now that I think many would see just because of the success in many ways that, that we showed in display this year, that, we're, that we are ready now to compete at the upper level of the conference. And uh, with that roster, uh, it, it developing and growing, uh, we are able to identify a more specific type of player that we need in order to fill a particular uh, gap, uh, to fill a particular need, or just simply as we're evolving our schemes, you know, that we need maybe a certain type of athlete a little bit more at a particular position uh, because maybe within our conference or whatnot, uh, it's just, you know, it's shown a need for that. So we, we, able, we were able really to take, and that, that process started back uh, really in, in late March, uh, early April of last year where we really gave definition to uh, every player. And at that point in time, we thought we might be able to sign about 17 or 18 players. And, uh, you know, this year, you know, we're, we're hoping we can notch out maybe 12 to, to, to 13 when it's all mm -hmm. said and done. We, we might get a fourth, uh, a, a 14th player out of, out of this. But, um, uh, but I think when you just kind of look and see how important it is to get each one of these positions right, uh, I think our staff showed a great deal, great deal of discipline in doing that. It's really exciting to see us get a quarterback that uh, was our number one guy on our board since uh, February. Um, Ron Olivas came in uh, for our junior day, and uh, really we were excited to see him come from El Paso, Texas. He went to East Lake High School, and uh, Ron is one of those 6'2", 200-plus quarterbacks with a tremendous arm talent. He's very good at his, his mobility. His football IQ is off the chart. Uh, his stats this year, I, I think it was the maybe fifth ball game before he threw for less than 400 yards a game. And uh, I, I just told him the other night on the phone that uh, uh, because a high school game is a short amount of time than a college game, that if he would have had as many minutes as Bailey Zappi would have had this year, you know, his numbers may have challenged Bailey's. Uh, but um, well, Ron's a great leader. He's, he's a 4.0 he's a student. He's just everything. I, I think sometimes I, I look at him and, and think, you know, d does he have any fault to him? But I'm sure in time, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll poke around and try to find one. But uh, we're really excited. You know, I mentioned a quarterback first because at the end of the day, your quarterback leads your football team. But also a quarterback of Orion's magnitude can lead a recruiting class. And uh, he was the first player that committed to us. And it was, he's been committed to us since back in the early part of the summer, and we, and we just couldn't be more excited about Orion. We have a, and, and the other thing about Orion's really uh, great is that he will be here January the 19th mm -hmm. when we start spring semester. And uh, for a quarterback to be able to come in and, uh, and be able to go through spring practice and, and to go through just the off season where, you know, these teammates now that he takes on at HBU become his brothers and uh, that there's a, of uh, familiarity with that, it is a huge, huge bonus for, for, for a quarterback and, and any position for that matter, but particularly I think for a quarterback. Uh, Andrew um, Alvarado is an offensive tackle. He's out of uh, Edinburgh, uh, Texas, and uh, uh, Andrew's a big old guy. He's about 6'5", and he's going to push about 285, maybe about 290, really athletic. and. You know, uh, most people may not really know where Edinburgh is, Edinburgh is, but it is uh, kind of towards the border, kind of southwest of here, and, and maybe not a town that the average recruiting uh, coach will go through. Uh, but um, we were able to uh, find out about uh, Andrew through some common friends. We looked at tape on him, fell in love with him. He's a big, athletic, tall offensive tackle. And, you know, whether you're talking about the NFL or, or – uh, uh, 
whatever level you're talking about, obviously tackles are a premium, and we got a really special guy. Andrew's another one of those really smart guys, and he'll also be in here uh, January the 19th uh, for s spring term, and, and we really feel like uh, we've uh, really struck it uh, big with, with, with uh, Andrew. And we, we love who he is in, in every aspect. And then one of the most uh, successful defensive players in the city of Houston is Rodney Dansby out of uh, Bear Lero High School. Um, Rod Roddy is that 6'1", 225, 30-pound linebacker that can really run. And, uh, you know, Russ, when we look at the success that this program in a short amount of time has had at linebacker, mm -hmm. you know, we feel like uh, Rodney is right in line with, with exactly what we wanted. He was uh, one of the highest desired players across the board at all positions for us. Uh, we, we, ident we identified him early as being one that uh, uh, we felt like uh, was truly a, a special DNA guy. Mm -hmm. He's a great student. He's here, here in our backyard over at uh, uh, Bel, Bel Air, and we just feel very, very fortunate to, to, to have him on campus. You know, one of the, one of the things that kind of makes it interesting uh, about linebackers this day and time, most people don't understand. That the, I think that the old adage is you've got to be able to, you know, go, go in there and kind of put your face in the fan, be a tough guy, and just hit whatever moves. But um, linebackers have had to deal with so much conflict with, with the advent of the uh, run pass, mm -hmm. com, you know, just the RPOs as we call it, and the, uh, the, the real gray run pass keys you get with all the volume of scheme that offenses and defenses are running, you've got to be a smart guy, really athletic, uh, but you've got to be able to play in space almost like a safety. And uh, Rodney really is uh, a great fit. We were only going to take one inside linebacker in this class, and uh, so getting, get, getting you know, a top guy like this is, is a really huge bonus. And uh, he'll be consistent with the uh, top linebackers that, uh, for, for those that have followed HBU football, know the Garrett Dolans and the Langston Tunson, and obviously uh, Caleb Johnson this year, and Brendan Brent, Young and Cody Moncure. These are guys who have all been, non uh, who've all been Southland Conference players. And uh, we, we, we've got another one that'll, that'll fall right in line with, with, with that group. Uh, the, the next guy I want, I want to visit with is, is another high, uh, Houston product, uh, Tra Travis Greenewalt. He's at the Port High School. Uh, Travis is a 6'1", 170-pound corner. And uh, you know, one thing that you're, you're constantly trying to do is you're trying to find corners with length. And when we kind of talk about length, we're talking about long arms, and we're also talking about height. And if you can kind of find those guys that have a long distance between the floor and their belt, those long legs, it, it all adds to the component of length. And uh, Travis uh, really displays all those qualities. He is super athletic, uh, a, a, a bright student. Uh, his mom, Kelly, is a wonderful lady. And just I think when we kind of look at, you know, corners and as hard as they are to find, and Travis has been committed to us, you know, well back since the uh, summer. And we just feel like we've got a great one. And, uh, Travis was recognized by the uh, Greater Houston Touchdown Club as one of the top defensive players in the city of mm -hmm. Houston this year and, and uh, has been publicized as that. And, and so we just feel like, a, here again, a very specific need, and we went out and found one of our top guys. And, and this class, uh, maybe not as big, but the quality is really, really, really uh, pretty special. Another local guy here, uh, Jimmy Guy, he's a, we call them edge rushers now. Some of the old school folks are going to kind of think, well, they're just defensive ends. And they are, but, you know, the, the NFL term and, and kind of now what's migrated into uh, the, the corridors that everybody speak of is, is an edge rusher. And it's basically those guys, right, Russ, that got their quarterback and, and uh, Andre Walker. I think we all still remember Andre a couple of years ago leading the nation in sacks and being a first-team All-American. And, and, um, and we got two in this class, and they're hard to find. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Jimmy is, a, is another guy with great length. He's uh, six two and a half, weighs right at about 220 pounds. He's got those long arms. And when that ball snapped, I tell you what, it doesn't take him very long to figure out where the quarterback is and accelerate. His uh, highlight tape is just a tremendous uh, for, for, for a ball coach. You know, we, we love those edge rushers, and we feel like Jimmy will have a long career. And uh, Jimmy had a chance to play for Rick uh, LeSavers Le Le over at uh, uh, Ridge Point. And uh, Rick's one of the finest coaches recognized in this city. And uh, we just feel like, you know, here again, when, when you know coaches well and you get honest feedback from them, uh, that and they know what a really good player – and there, there's a bunch of them in this city. It really helps you when maybe we haven't had a chance to get out to be able to see these guys. Uh, then we, we have the feedback that helps us answer the questions that we're looking for. Uh, the, the next guy I want to uh, talk, talk about is really one of the best 
receivers that have come through the city in, in recent years. Uh, Charles King out of uh, a, a pretty good program in the city, North Shore, <laughs> and uh, they they just keep on figuring out how to win every ball game, and it's really a credit to to the coaching staff and and the players in that program at the consistency that they have shown. But Charles is a guy that uh, you know many might say is uh, uh, maybe the most valuable player on that North Shore team this year. He does so many things; never comes off the field. Uh, he is a six one, two hundred and five pound uh, slot receiver, and uh, he can, he can he can kind of be a, a guy that when you when you say you need a true wide out he can be a true wide out when you need a slot he can be a slot when you need a guy that can motion and do things to to to, to do to, to be the high IQ guy you know within the offense that you move around he can do that he's got great ball skills highly competitive and and uh, you know does a great job in the classroom and and he's he is a great example of the product that's coming out of North Shore. And, there, and, and there's a reason why they're having the success they have. And, and we're excited about Charles and, and really feel like uh, he's going to have a great career and, and will make an impact on us as a freshman. Uh, we signed a tight end uh, this year. We haven't signed too many tight ends in this program. No, and so we, we made a decision back in uh, February, March of last year that we wanted to bring in a tight end. Uh, we, we, we wanted a big body, some, a guy that uh, in, in the passing game, uh, that you can be able to put on a linebacker, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it really helps you with the, the ability to sometimes to create that separation, not not to get pushed and rerouted, but to really be able to to have a big target, you know, particularly over the middle of the field. And um, so Trey, Trey Lawson's a little small guy at a, at about uh, six four two forty, and uh, <laughs> but can run like a wide receiver. He's he's played uh, wildcat quarterback. He's played mm -hmm. tailback and. He's played defensive line. He's played linebacker. He's a guy that at Gainesville High School has has been used in so many ways. And so I think when you see uh, a guy like that, one of the great things um, about Trey that, that you that, that you we we early on really saw is he was a he is a really good basketball player, mm -hmm. and, and and they have a really good basketball team this year there at Gainesville. And just talking to him the other night, I know they're hoping that they're going to be able to make a, a huge run to the state, but. Um, uh, you know, I think when you have those guys that are basketball guys and, and they tra they really translate well with all the ball skills to, to part of your receiving core. And so it, um, it was a kind of a journey because, we, you know, we really had to kind of take the uh, dust off of anything that labeled uh, a, a tight end. But we're going to be able to use them in ways that uh, I think people will be excited to see a big guy do, do, do the things he can in, in our program. Uh, the, the one guy from out of the state of Texas is a De, uh, De, Desmond Malone. Desmond's from Perry, uh, Ohio, and uh, he went to Perry High School. Uh, Ohio is probably regarded as one of the top five states mm -hmm. in the nation there, Russ, with uh, recruiting and the, the number of, of athletes that come out of there. And we really feel like we've got a special safety. Uh, he's a 6'2", 190-pound guy. Kind of a little bit of the, the, the situation here is that his dad works for uh, Lockheed Martin up in Fort mm -hmm. Worth. His dad was from Houston, and so um, he called us up, uh, uh, I don't know, probably about a month ago and just said, I have a really good son that plays football in Ohio. Well, that gets our attention there. Right. You know, Ohio's a good state. And, uh, and then you, know, you hear the Texas roots, you put on the tape, and, and you see Desmond, and uh, it's a, you know, he's a really good player. He, he's a big safety that will come up and really, he's a physical guy. In, in, in the run game, he will really bring the, you know, really bring the physical nature, and he can run. He's got great range. He's got great ball skills, and uh, you know his his highlight tape is just dotted with uh, great interceptions. And so we feel like, you know, we've kind of stood a product. You know, I'm kind of tired of the Ohio schools coming to Texas recruiting. It happens every year. Uh, maybe with COVID and not getting out, maybe that's kept them out of our state. But uh, we got one from Ohio, and we're and we're pretty excited about that. Um, and then, then the ninth guy and the, the the last guy, and I'm going by alphabetic order, Russ. So I'm not going to make anybody <laughs> feel like. Well, I did bring the the quarterback up first, didn't yeah. I? But uh, Rufus Toes at a Holmes High School over in San Antonio, and uh, Rufus is uh, a guy that much like Jimmy, uh, guy that we talked about earlier as an edge rusher. He is a uh, he is a quarterback chasing dude. And when the ball gets snapped, he reminds us of Andre Walker. Mm -hmm. And when we saw his tape, and we looked at him back in March, we, we made our offer really early in the spring, and, and he's been committed to us for a good while here. And it, it, it was really an important gift for us because he had, you know, some really good Southland offers in there, as, as a lot of these kids did. And, and uh, 
you know, when we get a guy like that, we get a really good player, but also it keeps another conference member from getting that player. And, and it's a double win for us in recruiting. But uh, Rufus, uh, here again, he's a really bright guy. He's a lot smarter than probably most of us as coaches. And, uh, but he loves football, and, and he just plays with such a fast speed and uh, just a, a, a really committed guy to the game. So we really are, are excited about these nine. And uh, Rush, you, you mentioned there are a few more. I think uh, over the next 24 hours, there'll be a couple more that we'll add. And, Sometimes you're kind of you know wanting to get the dead home from work where he can be a part of the the signing party and you know those are good things for for, for the families and it makes it a little bit difficult because we can't talk about an athlete until the um, NCAA recognizes the, the the paperwork back on our campus right so uh, but uh, in in the next day or two we'll add to it so as it uh, kind of grows and then hopefully in February maybe maybe there's two or three more we add and it'd be a, a class that uh, maybe not as big but I think the quality is going to be something that we're going to talk about for years. Right, and when you look at, at the highlights of these guys, for, you know, in some of my position where you're looking for information on people and it jumps out to you how good athletes that you're able to find, like you said, uh, the basketball uh, playing ability mm -hmm. and, and of a couple of these guys. Orion was one too, that, you know, Absolutely. they're a very good uh, basketball player in the city of El Paso. Um, and also, one thing that, that stuck out to me is the amount of guys in this class that are still playing right now in the state playoffs for, for their teams, and, and not just North Shore, but that there's other teams that, that are having really good seasons that these guys are, are really part of. Absolutely, you know, I think good, you know, good players, and you, you get a collection and a roster of good players, you know, success follows. Uh, you know, the, the number of multi-sport athletes in this bunch, you know, the, the, the tight end Trey Lawson, for example, plays football, mm -hmm. was originally a basketball guy, you know, at 6'4", 240, you know, that's, that's a big guy in high school, but probably, a, you know, at the Division One, there's not as many, you know, 6'4 guys, you know, that, that are, re, you know, re recruited as post players. And so he found a home in football, but he's also a baseball player, play, plays baseball for Gainesville High School and throws shot, you know, in, in track. And so there's a four-sport athlete. and. Uh, 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 Ryan, you know, he, so last night we're talking to him and, and I got to, I got to be frank now, we had a little conversation between some of our coaches talking as to who the best shooter was. And I don't know, I think uh, we'll, we'll have to decide here pretty soon <laughs> when he gets on campus, who, who the best uh, three, three point shooter is, but these are really good athletes. And uh, it's, uh, it's a group that uh, are great students. And uh, I think that's important. You know, we, we want to be great. Uh, on the front end when they, when they come in. We, they want to do a great job when they're here. I think one of the big things that we take pride in as a department is uh, we are tops once again for many years uh, in uh, the uh, gr uh, gra graduation success rate. And it's a, uh, uh, a stat that the NCAA keeps and, and we're one of the top division one schools in the nation in, in graduation sure. rate. And uh, our APR, uh, which is the uh, academic uh, progress rate is really here again, the, the tops in the Southland. So these are things that are, are, are kind of complete the double win of winning in the classroom, winning on the field, and, and we're excited about the progress we're making as a program, and, and uh, we can't wait for 2021 to get here. That's right, and with um, Orion and Andrew, they'll, they'll be here in, in January, and we'll have signing day, uh, another signing day on, on February 3rd, and that'll kind of wrap up the recruiting season for you, but then uh, you and I talked earlier, you're pushing back spring football this year uh, to April. So mm -hmm. what goes into that decision and how do you think it's going to help the, the program? Well, you know, th this is th this is new, kind of new turf for us. Uh, there, there's been a growing trend, trend in recent years to try to push spring practice. We, we get 15 days within a 35-day period, uh, 15 practices in a 35-day period. And so... Uh, the, the NCAA c controls that. It's, it's a very regimented time, and once you start, you got to get those 15 in and 35. And if you don't get them in, you don't get them in. And uh, uh, we were fortunate that last year we got uh, 11 practices in, other 15 before the COVID break hit. And because we went early, we were able to to be able to do that. And we feel like it really helped us in in, in August. Well, you know, this year I think with uh, the uh, COVID virus, really where we are, and seeing where maybe the later fall may be a time where there's less uh, concern over, you know, maybe how, how broad the, the virus may be at that point in time. You know, I, th I think we're all encouraged by the vaccine coming out this week for the healthcare workers and, and the uh, law enforcement and, and th those individuals who are out there serving our communities. And, and as the uh, vaccine only grows in its uh, 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 spread, then I think we'll, we'll, be, get, we'll be able to see uh, probably a healthier environment to, to practice. Um, 
I think that's uh, what's tough is uh, uh, in uh, uh, February, if, if we were to have a situation, and we were so fortunate this fall, Russ, that we just well, were not impacted uh, within the campus as a whole at HBU, right. but our team uh, with COVID. But, um, you know, if you get one player and there's a couple, three or four, uh, uh, you know, critical contact or, you know, tr tracings involved, those guys would miss, and uh, you can never get those practices back. So it's a wise move. And, of course, we, we've had a few surgeries. And uh, because we finished earlier, those surgeries occurred in mid-October. Mm -hmm. And so a few of those surgeries, we'll get them back by going in uh, April. So we'll start spring practice uh, April the 5th and uh, be, be done by April the 30th, as opposed to starting early in February. And, and uh, I, I think it's the right decision for us where we, where, where we are at this point. All right, Coach, well, I want to congratulate you on, a, on another uh, great class and, and the work that you and the coaching staff have been able to do in the fall with all of the challenges. I know it, it's tough, but it uh, looks like you've come through it pretty well with, with this class. I uh, just want to thank everybody for joining us here this afternoon and tuning in, and we'll be back. We'll have a full press conference on Wednesday, February 3rd for National Signing Day. It's a little different in December with, with the – campus being a little less lively so we come back in February and and do all the all the bells and whistles and you can watch that on hbuhuskies.com and right now as as we head into to the holidays in in 2021 coach I'm just going to leave it to you to, to wrap up and what you're looking forward to as we head into the new year well you know 2020 has been a tough year COVID's changed our country and and, and everything that we kind of know has been normal it's, it's changed that and for all of us and for those families that have been impacted, you know, I, I know I speak for the HBU community, you know, our hearts have been with uh, so many folks that have been, you know, in, in, in many cases just really saddened, you know, by, by the, the effects. But, you know, we got 2021 coming and, we, and we're praying for just a great year to come. We are excited about this football team as we grow. But uh, in, in, the, in the meantime, we've got a pretty special day there, December 25th coming up and just really wish everybody a Merry Christmas. <laughs>